Oh, it's so great to have you here. Yeah, so let's start off by, by talking about your a bit of your background yeah. story first of how all this came about, really. Yeah, so it was about a year ago. Um, I was getting ready to come to work with rain and I was at home having a shower, <laughs> jumped out of the shower, putting on my uh, moisturiser and uh, stood in front of the mirror and I just felt a lump under my right boob and I... I kind of thought that it would just be hormonal because of my age. I'd been getting some night sweats and I thought, you know, maybe I'm sort of going mm. a bit perimenopausal. Uh, so I didn't think too much of it and uh, then came to work. And actually that day at work, we had bowel babe on and she was talking about bowel cancer. And she said, you know, if anybody sees something different about their body, don't just sit on it. Make sure you, mm. you know, get it checked out. So mm. I called the GP, saw the GP, GP said, yeah, let's get you referred. And in the two weeks it took from seeing the GP to seeing the consultant, another four lumps had grown. Oh, wow. But I didn't think it would be anything because I thought, well, cancer can't possibly do that. It must be hormonal. Yeah. So, or cysts. Or, or, or cysts, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And even the consultant was sort of, yeah, was most mm. likely cysts. So had a mammogram, biopsy, and then four days later, yeah, my was sort told. of... The rug was pulled from underneath me when I was told that, yeah, it's... Um, grade three aggressive breast cancer and mm. that I'd have to go in for um, a mastectomy sort of five days later. And you have, so, you have three, is it three young children Yeah, well? so five, seven and nine-year-old. So it was, <clears throat> it was kind of, you know, what, how do I... What, yeah, what do you do? How do you tell them? each oh, child differently. I had to I do it differently. Really yeah, yeah, because the five-year-old, her understanding is very different to what my nine-year-old un yeah. un understanding is like. So my five-year-old, I was just very much like, you know, I've got to go in for a little, have a little op operation, and um, you know, I won't, I can't pick you up, but you know, we can still cuddle. And she was totally fine with it. Um, in fact, she very much enjoys the fact that I've now got one boob. And, <laughs> it, it, and when even when the postman comes to the door, she's been known to tell the postman that no, really? <laughs> you've, got, you've got one boob. I love kids. She's like, that. just show him, don't show him the good boob, but just show him the one that's not there. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, neither. He doesn't want to see either. <laughs> um, and then, so then my eldest and my middle one, I explained it that I said, you know, it's a bit like I've got a Veruca, you know, the Veruca on your toe. If we don't put the, the medicine on it, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. Um, but my Veruca's in my boobie and it needs, the doctors need to go in and they need to take it out and then I'm going to have to have some special medicine just to make sure it doesn't grow back. Mm -hmm. And my son said to me, is it cancer? And oh. I was like, wow, I just didn't... I had no... I underestimated how much mm -hmm. he understood. How much a nine-year-old yeah. would know, yeah. So where did the, camp the idea for the campaign come from? Well, totally I was, from you, wasn't it? Yeah, Completely, yeah. I just... I spoke to so many... Women, I've spoken to so many women on my journey, and, and a lot of them say, "Oh, I just don't want to. I hate touching my boobs. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to do it." And there's never a right time to do it. And I think women, we 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 are not very good at looking after ourselves. Sometimes we're so busy looking after everybody else around us. Mm. So I thought, well, I saw it when I looked in a mirror. Where is an obvious place for the mirror? I thought, actually, in a changing room. Mm. We all go into changing mm. rooms. It's a genius. I mean, you say this is one of the best campaigns you've it's ever done. It's been incredible. And the endorsements. Who would have thought? This woman is bursting with ideas. Helen is an amazing producer, and we, we miss her so much. Mm -hmm. Can't wait yeah. till you get back to work properly. Yeah, properly, yeah. properly, we can't yeah. wait. But it's just been incredible, and the support from the viewers has been amazing, Colleen. It, re yeah. it really has. It's been well, wonderful. I mentioned Madonna. She Madonna! Yeah. I know. There's and you also know some others on Absolutely. Now, Madonna had that in the background, and you know what a control freak she is. If she was wasn't wanting to endorse that, she that would not be it. there. No, she didn't believe been... in it. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, she lost her mum. Her mum died of breast cancer. Oh, and yeah. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, that really resonated with her. Yeah, and yeah, I think that was yeah. really important. Um, and we had Naomi uh, Campbell. Yeah. She's, she's also been oh, yeah. quoted up with it. Cheryl yeah. Crow, Cheryl Crow. There she is. There's Naomi. No well. Because again, her mum, who's absolutely fine, but her mum had breast cancer too. Oh, and she's Cheryl a breast Cheryl cancer yeah, survival, yeah. Cheryl Crow. So they've all been getting behind it. And especially one of the, you know, the big supports of it is the Met Police. Yeah. Who actually... Actually, we have a member of in our audience today. Um, welcome, Tara um, McGovern. Um, yeah. So, Tara, <laughs> this is Tara McGovern. Um, where did you first see the stickers? So, I was at home after chemo, uh, watching morning TV, watching Lorraine, yeah. and uh, saw the <laughs> launch of the campaign. And I thought that would be absolutely perfect for work for officers and staff who come in to change for work. And I'd wanted to raise awareness of breast cancer because obviously I was at home having found a lump myself. So 
that's how it started. So, right, so it's important because we yeah. must remember as well that breast cancer obviously also affects men. Indeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, which yes. a lot of men don't still I know, because we, yeah. we, we, um, we had a chap on and we did a, an examination with Dr Hillary to show you how to examine yourself yeah. as, mm. as a bloke, because that's really important too. Yeah. Yeah. Lorraine yeah. picked the male model to come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. their joy. Yeah. Lorraine's on my I way. I'm surprised when you say women are still reluctant to uh, examine it's themselves. I know. Because all the campaigns, I know, you and, I know, and, you and guys, Colleen, and we've done it yeah. so many times, oh. uh, uh, the reluctance to, to examine yourself when the results can be so Absolutely, and it takes minutes, you know, and the, the, thing, the thing is that's so important to me is, yes, I've got breast cancer, but I caught it early, and it's yeah. very, very treatable if you catch it early. Yeah. So... I just want but to also sure. you are living with breast cancer and yeah. the thing about Helen is it doesn't define her. Yeah. I mean, she's got all these amazing ideas, but you're still a mum. I mean, I remember phoning you and thinking that, because we were coming to see you when you were getting your treatment, and I'm imagining you sort of like languishing somewhere, you know, yeah. in bed. I said, where are you? I'm in Tesco's buying stuff. There are other supermarkets available. But I'm, <laughs> I'm in Tesco's buying stuff for the kids, you know, and I'm like, what? But how, you yeah, you was, will not was, let was, life stop. It was you know, you Halloween and the kids were supposed to go into school in fancy <laughs> dress and I had total chemo brain. And I took them into school in their school uniform like a complete loser because everybody else was <laughs> like witches. And I was like, <laughs> run, running to call running my oncologist. I'm going to be half an hour late. Oh, no, <laughs> get oh yeah, well, as always, as always, the kids come first, don't yeah, they? Whatever yeah, always, you're going through, because they kind of have to, don't yeah. they? Yeah. But I know when I did the all new Monty show and all of that, the main thing you want to do in my head is if you can save one person's life. Yeah. Just yeah. one, just one person. Well, we've had four people contact us already to say that they've got a cancer diagnosis. One started well, chemo last Friday. Funny you should say that because one of them has sent a little message in for you. Oh, wow. Oh. So let's take a look at that now. <laughs> It's certainly been a life-changing journey for me so far since I saw the sticker. Um, I got myself checked. Um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I just wanted to say I'm really grateful to Lorraine and Helen and um, the rest of the team at ITV who continue to spread the word about this life-saving campaign. So get checking. Oh. Oh. <laughs> just feel like that that's, that's kind of what, it, what it's all about and Sally's... She's got her second round of chemo this Friday and keep going. I know you're suffering today, but... Um, yeah, yeah, well, I tell you what, well done. it's an amazing campaign. Thank you. Keep going. You look fantastic. Doesn't she look Lorraine, so well? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and Lorraine, it's fantastic to have you on oh, here. Lorraine and Helen, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>